requested a removal of all ranitidine products known as Zantac from the market because they found a genotoxic impurity. So today we discuss together a new review done by pharmacy students from Omar Qura University under supervision of Dr. Afnan Batubara. Hello, Rosanna Gahtani. Can you tell us what is genotoxic impurity? Hello, everyone. First of all, genotoxicity is a broad term that refers to any deleterious change in the genetic material, regardless of the mechanism by which the change is included. But the potential genotoxic impurity has been defined as impurity that shows a structural alert for genotoxicity, but that has not been tested in experimental test model. And according to ICH guideline, impurities related to the drug substance can be classified into three main categories. Uh, one, organic impurity. Two, inorganic impurity. Three, residual solvent. And there is another classification according to Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacture of America paper. Class 1, impurities known to be genotoxic, mutagenic, and carcinogenic. Class 2, impurities known to be genotoxic, mutagenic, but with a known carcinogenic potential. Class 3, impurities that have an alerting structure are related to the structure of active pharmaceutical ingredients with a known genotoxic, mutagenic potential. Class 4, alerting structure related to the parent uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Class 5, no alerting structure or indication of genotoxic potential. Actually, I am here today with all my research partner. Now, Novel Mershadi will discuss the control of genotoxic impurity in pharmaceutical products. A toxicological assessment of all the impurities is very complicated. So, the European Medicine Agency in 2006 find its way to control these genotoxic impurities a method called a three-shot of toxicological concern. This method set a tolerable intake equal 1.5 microgram per person per day. This method would frequently be used for mutagenic impurities present in pharmaceuticals for long-term treatment greater than 10 years. Keeping in mind, not all the medical items are used for a long-term treatment. So Miller found a new concept. This concept says the length of exposure is a key element influencing the probability of a carcinogenic response. This table shows the optional limits for daily intake of genotoxic impurities. It says the duration of exposure was a month, so the allowable daily intake would be a 16 microgram. Second thing is the risk assessment of impurities. In this, we focus on the chemical structure. So the knowledge of the chemical structure of impurity and its formation mechanism is very important to assess its toxicological implication, thus improving the synthetic chemical process to reduce or eliminate the impurity. And the figure is explain how the assessment is done. Last thing, the synthetic strategies in eliminating the GTI. Scientists are often advised to find the possibilities for avoiding the use and generation of the GTI in the synthetic phase by changing the synthetic route during the development. The primary strategy is to reshape the synthetic process by either altering a suitable reaction conditions such as a modifying proportion of reaction components, interchanging reaction add-on modes, modifying main starting material, or maybe attempting with a different mechanism. All these methods can be done without any noticeable loss. In the workup stages, we have a crystallization, isolation, washing and drying. All these things may reduce the GTI. To explain analysis of genotoxic impurities and how to choose the right technique, watch the following video. Analytes make attempts to determine a way for analyzing various genotoxic impurities by using unique potent methods as far as possible, such as HPLC with UV or GC with FID. This method are usually performed at the first stage, while LC with MS are more complicated methods. Otherwise, the decision depending on the properties of the analytes and sample matrix. HPLC is the one of the single biggest chromatography technique that separate, identify, and quantify chemical compounds from a mixture. And it has been widely used for the analysis of antibiotic because it's superior to conventional microbiological assays in the term of specificity, sensitivity, and significativity reduce analysis time. 
hyphenated technique get a better separation and combine two different methods to exploit the advantage of both. This figure show a lower detection level of genotoxic impurities require more sophisticated analytical technique for quantification. The nature of the impurity, the characterized of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, and the level to be determined will influence the detection technique employed. We will discuss the advantage and limitation of this technique with Ragat Saleh. Pros and cons for the analysis methods of genotoxic impurities. First method, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. These two methods approved a good synergetic effect which got to be applied in a wide range of separation processes. But on the other hand, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry can be the buildup of non-volatile, such predominantly the sample matrix within the detector, which may affect the performance of the detector and resulting in a diminished response. The second method, gas chromatography mass spectrometry. It's a very specific technique, therefore used in many separating applications but the main challenge observed in analyzing by this method are the large range of volatility polarity and reactivity of the substances the third method the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy nmr it's a robust and quasi universal detector has a non-destructive nature which allows easy sample preparation and simple method development but the main con of NMR is comparatively low sensitivity and high equipment cost. The parameters for method validation are system suitability, specificity, linearity, precision, accuracy, limit of detection, limit of quantitation, and robustness. In the end, these days, Genotoxic impurities in pharmaceuticals at lower levels are of expanding concerns, not exclusively to pharmaceutical industries, but also for the regulatory agencies because of their dangers for carcinogenesis. So we are expecting to give extra consideration for the control and investigation. The need to decide these impurities at low levels depend on the threshold of toxicological and daily doses taking into consideration the often reactive and labeled nature of genotoxic impurities, which show significant analytical challenges. Hence, sensitive and sophisticated analytical methodologies are deemed necessary in order as to have the option to test and control genotoxic impurities at low level in drug substances. Thank you for all the talented students from Umm Al-Qura University. It was a pleasure meeting you and keep up the good work. And now it's time to wrap up the show. Thank you for our lovely guest for joining us today. And remember to stay home and wash your hands. And may God bless you. Have a nice day.